Next, we're going to look and see how special relativity affects kinetic energy. So when an object, let's say, that has a mass of one kilogram is moving at a certain velocity, it has kinetic energy. And traditionally, we looked at kinetic energy as being equal to one-half mv squared. Now that is non-relativistic kinetic energy, but because as we will see in just a moment, relativistically kinetic energy needs to be calculated in a very different way. But let's say that uh, we're going to do it the old-fashioned way, non-relativistic, and let's see what number we would get for an object that has a mass of one kilogram that would be moving at 0.5c. So plugging that into our old equation, this is equal to one-half times one kilogram times 0 0.5 times 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So that's half the speed of light and of course I have to square that. And now if I get my calculator, we can see what value we would get for the kinetic energy under that circumstance. So we have 3 e to the 8, we square that, multiply that times 0.5 squared, multiply times 1 and multiply times 0.5 and we get as a result the kinetic energy equal to 1.125 times 10 to the 16th, and of course that would be in joules. But as you will find out in just a moment, when you're moving that fast at half the speed of light, you will not get this to be the correct answer. Not correct. You'll see that in just a moment. And you say, okay, maybe that's because the mass changes when you go that fast, right? The mass will increase to this equation where mass is now the original mass divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared over gamma times m sub naught. So maybe what we need to do in here is plug this number in here and then recalculate the kinetic energy. All right, if we do that, let's find out what gamma is. Gamma is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus the v squared would be 0.5c, so 0.5c quantity squared over c squared. Of course, the c's cancel out right away and find out what that is equal to, that 0.5, we square that, we subtract that from 1, take the square root, and then take the inverse, and we get 1.1547, so gamma equals 1.1547, I just kept a few extra significant figures, so we don't make any errors, so let's plug that in for m, so what if uh, kinetic energy was equal to 1 half um, times gamma times m sub naught, times v squared. What will we get now? All right, so this is equal to 1 half times uh, 1.1547 times the rest mass times 0 0.5 times 3, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And of course we have to square those. So let's see what we get done instead. Of course, the only difference between this and this is that we have the term gamma in there. So if we multiply this times gamma, we get the kinetic energy. And so we multiply that times 1.125e to the 16th. And we get 1.299 times 10 to the 16 joules. And guess what? You'll find out in just a moment that doesn't give us the right answer either. So it doesn't look like we can use this traditional equation. So for relativistic kinetic energy, do not use that equation in any way, shape, or form. You will not get the right answer. What you need to do instead is go to the concept of rest mass energy and total energy. Of course, most people in the world know that E equals mc squared. And of course, if the object is not moving, it has rest mass. And so we take the rest mass of the object times c squared that gives you the rest energy as we call it. It's simply the energy you would get if you take an object of a certain mass and completely convert it to energy. The total energy is equal to the relativistic mass of the object times c squared. And now using special relativity and the relativistic equation for kinetic energy, we can say that kinetic energy is equal to the difference between the total energy minus the rest mass energy. That's how you find kinetic energy. And let's calculate that one for this example and see if we get a different result. All right. So the total energy is simply mc squared. The rest mass energy is <coughs> m sub naught c squared. So we can factor out a c squared. So this is equal to m minus m sub naught times c squared. And of course, m can be written as uh, gamma times m sub naught. So this is equal to gamma 
times m sub naught minus m sub naught times c squared. So finally, this can now be written as gamma minus 1 if I factor out an m sub naught, m sub naught, c squared. And that will give you the correct equation or the correct value for the uh, relativistic mass. Since we already knew what gamma was, we can plug that in here. So this is equal to 1.1547 minus 1, that's this quantity right here, times the rest mass, 1 kilogram, times the speed of light squared, times 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second squared. And let's see what we get for that. So 3 e to the 8 squared at times this minus 1, so that's simply 0 0.1547 equals, and guess what? This is equal to 1.392 times 10 to the 16 joules. And that's the kinetic energy, and that is the correct answer. Notice that is very different from the two answers I got there. So this is how you find the correct kinetic energy. Again, it's simply the difference between the total energy and the rest mass energy. Total energy is mc squared, rest mass energy, m sub naught c squared. Factor out of c squared, write the relativistic mass in terms of the rest mass times gamma, like this. You can then factor out an m sub naught, so this is the rest mass energy times gamma minus 1. Gamma can be found by plugging that velocity of the object into this equation right here. Plug that in there, and that gives you the kinetic energy. So, anytime the velocity of an object is more than 10% of the speed of light, use this equation for kinetic energy. Anytime it's less than 10% of the speed of light, you can probably go ahead and use that equation. Although, 10%, that's pretty fast, so be careful where you draw the boundary. And that's how you do that.